Uh, we got the tide coming in here. This is uh, the uh, starter line system for what we hope to be the metro area's light rail system. Uh, you can see here in Virginia Beach line right here, Newtown Road, Military Highway Station, Ingleside, Valentine, Norfolk State, Harbor Park, right at City Hall, Plume Street at MacArthur Station, uh, following that, Bonacelo Avenue, York Street, and then ending at the Medical Center. This is some uh, renderings of the light rail stops themselves. You've probably seen the light rail is currently kind of running up and down, taking its uh, test drives. You have to have 1,600 hours per car in order to put it into service. And uh, we're kind of looking at somewhere in the late fall, uh, which is obviously behind schedule and over budget. Uh, the over budget part of this thing is where we really kind of jammed uh, Virginia Beach a little bit on this thing. And obviously, we are all interested in finding out where the money is with uh, HRT. And the oversight of that, obviously, could have been a lot better. Uh, it still is a, the cheapest light rail system in the country on a per mile basis. And just as a comparison, at $330 million, if you were to add two lanes to Interstate 264, you're probably talking about three times as much money just simply to add two lanes uh, to Interstate 264. It's just yet another means of moving our people around. It's not the end and be all to the end of congestion. But for example, the other night when I was at Harbor Park, it would have been awful nice to be able to move those numbers of people in a different way other than the, uh, the vehicles currently. So those are some other examples of uh, the light rail stops. This is at the YMCA at York Street, the Medical Center Station. Here's an important statistic. For every dollar we invest, there's about a 4 to $9 return. Uh, based on economic activity, and that's a stat from the American Public Transportation Association. And here's some examples of those things. Again, here's the light rail line, and here's some things that have happened already uh, with our $330 million investment. Uh, the Fort Norfolk area, for people that recognize the Corps of Engineers building over there in the far left corner, you can see this is an Urban Land Institute rendering of what this area could look like. This building here with the carrier deck on top of it is actually Harbor's Edge. And this is Fort Norfolk down here that George Washington commissioned and uh, has renamed that area as Fort Norfolk. Harbor's Edge is a retirement uh, community, 163 units. This place sold out in eight weeks. Uh, an interesting statistic is that about 70% of the residents initially going into Westminster Canterbury were from the Norfolk residents but there was no really good facility or nice assisted living place uh, for those folks. So uh, now we have one uh, they would really like to expand. This is a great project here. If you've uh, noticed the new building uh, at Fort Norfolk Plaza, this is a homegrown hero. His name is Dr. Keith Newby. He went to Booker T. Washington High School, Norfolk State University, and is now one of the nation's leading cardiologists. I always say Hampton Roads is a great place to have a heart attack because we had some really good heart hospital and a really good cardiologist here in the area. But this was a vision that he had several years back to come to us and wanted to build the first medical building built since 1962 with this medical tower in downtown Norfolk. So as a result, here's the light rail stop here. And so now we have a 200,000 square foot medical office, 19,000 square feet of retail, supported by an 800 uh, parking space garage. It is open, and I'd encourage you to go down there and take a look at it. Uh, this is the Belmont at Freemason. The Coterides uh, from Newport News came in and uh, built these uh, two-phase departments. They're well into the 90 percentile. In lease, it's a $45 million investment. The light rail stop is right at his front door. 234 apartments, two seven-story apartment towers, 84 units each. Um, 560 space garage supporting that. The residence in by Marriott is right at the light rail stop downtown. If you've not been in this, it has beautiful views down Duke Street. That's right on Brambleton Avenue, and it is, again, uh, literally within a half a block of the light rail station. $28 million investment. $150 million investment at the Wells Fargo Tower. You can see that it is right outside the front door of the Wells Fargo Center is the light rail stop. This is now, this is the parking deck here, and those are going to be the 121 uh, apartments that are going to clad that parking deck 
uh, and those are under construction right now and supported by a 1950 uh, space parking deck, by the way. Uh, this is a beautiful new building, the Virginia Arts Festival building. This is their rehearsal hall area. It's one of the most sophisticated in the country. It's really a beautiful addition to downtown. It's right across from the Chrysler Hall. Seven and a half million dollar investment. Uh, if you've not been on Granby Street lately, this is the Port Cachere of MacArthur Center, the front entrance there. This is the new Tidewater Community College Student Center. And it is just about done. And that's about a $17.6 million investment. And again, the light rail stop is right on Monticello Avenue. This is uh, the project that we are continuing to keep alive. And that's about all I can say to you. It's about two years away. Uh, the hotel demand is catching up uh, with the supply again. Uh, we obviously ran into the recession and the teeth of the recession. But this is the Weston Hotel project. This is Main Street and Granby Street. This is the old Customs House building over here, uh, Pete Decker's building here, the Marriott. Uh, this is a project that uh, will have 300 luxury hotel rooms and 16 condominiums on the top. And we continue to keep it alive until the economy and the financing package can be put, uh, put back together. So what we have right now with the light rail is about a $505 million uh, amount of trans transit-oriented development. And that's not to include what will be the new courthouse. I think in the paper this morning, this project has now gone up from $108 million to $141 million project. Uh, we are going to, uh, we tabled this uh, redevelopment uh, because of the uh, current economic conditions in, in our city, but uh, the new city manager, Marcus Jones, has done a much uh, rosier, optimistic picture of uh, how he can put back the, uh, uh, the uh, budget for the city, so we are hopeful that in the next couple of years you'll see this project. This is St. Paul's and Main Street, and again, you can see the light rail stop right at City Hall, and then where those trees are is where this development will occur. Uh, obviously, we're still taking a lot of suggestions on Waterside, if anybody's got any ideas. Anybody that was around when it first opened up, I think, is basically what everybody wants to see it become again, so we are we're looking at uh, all kinds of various options to expand the marina there. We have to go down toward the Sheridan because we can't go out in the channel. Uh, but uh, there's an awful lot of things going on behind the scenes about Waterside, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to get on with the rebirth of Waterside here this year sometime. If, if you've not seen the new rendering for the MacArthur Memorials expansion, this is what it looks like, $6 million investment. Uh, you can see the old city hall and where the uh, general is entombed with his wife there. Um, and this is, they're going to take down the old theater and put up this new theater and new multi-exhibit uh, multi kind of um, um, life story, not only in MacArthur, but other things too. And this is literally across the street from the new downtown MacArthur Station light rail stop. For anybody who hasn't seen our new uh, rendering for the Slover Memorial Library, this is also right across the street from the new uh, MacArthur Station, and this is the new rendering by Newman and Associates uh, of what will be uh, our new $50 million, uh, upwards now of $60 plus million, uh, new public library that will replace the current Memorial Library that got torn down uh, to replace uh, or to allow for the uh, light rail system to go through there. Uh, the building on the left uh, is where the current Memorial Library is currently housing uh, it, most of its collection. Uh, it's going to be connected uh, to, by this glass atrium, to a new building that will be built on the right-hand side there, and this is uh, Plume Street. Uh, if you were to go down Plume Street today, you will see that the High Page building is being torn down as we speak. Uh, it is about uh, three-quarters of the way down. Very careful demolition because it abuts the... Uh, Selden Arcade down there, so it has to be a very delicate demolition of that building, but this was the result of a $25 million uh, gift by the Frank uh, Batten family. Uh, the reason it's called Slover is that that was his uncle, Samuel P. Slover, who founded the Virginian Pilot, if you're wondering about that. She's also offered up a $15 million matching grant, so their total investment and gift could be as much as $40 million for this project, and it's going to be a, a unbelievably state-of-the-art uh, uh, library for, for our downtown and for the region. Uh, and again, what you can see here is an earlier rendering of what the library was originally going to look like. And that's the building where the current uh, library is housed. 
Uh, and fortunately, I think we uh, worked through and came up with a much more dynamic design uh, that's going to be a much nicer addition. Uh, this is Dillard's. That's the new light rail stop. Uh, and this is the MacArthur Memorial in the foreground here. We are still moving forward with the Rockefeller Apartments at the Union Mission. Uh, this has been tied up in a federal loan program that uh, U.S. development out of South Carolina, it, it basically, instead of taking six months, is taking now 20 months to get approval for these kinds of redevelopment funds. And it's going to pay basically for about 45% of the cost of renovating the former Union Mission building into what will be workforce-related apartments. And they're also going to take on 161 Granby Street. Uh, the Savoy is what the name of the former hotel at the turn of the century was. I call it the Leaning Tower of Norfolk because it tilts in. If you were to stand right here and look up, you can see that it's lean, leaning a bit. And when it was built for the Jamestown Exposition in 1903, this used to be a clamshell street. They poured the first two floors, and it began to lean inward. They corrected the lean and then built the rest of the seven floors. Uh, and yet, we noticed that it was beginning to pinch off some of the uh, finer details of the building. So we condemned the building. And uh, US development, though, is committed to saving that building and uh, bringing uh, retail back onto the first level and then putting in, again, workforce uh, uh, apartments uh, that appeal to the kind of people just coming into the start of their careers. Uh, this is, again, another example of light rail. If you were uh, to go down to the Eastern Virginia Medical School, you will see under construction this new $80 million investment. Uh, we all touched on the fact that the medical modeling and simulation, me modeling and simulation would be huge for us. We've got to change uh, and continue to grow our modeling and sim business. And medical modeling and simulation is huge. We're partnering with EVMS not only on medical modeling and simulation, but other kinds of research that they're doing and this is a new $80 million investment being made by EVMS downtown. Uh, this is just to show you if you're wondering what's going on at 18th and Monticello. This is the new bus barn. Uh, these folks are going to be moving out of their temporary space over at the Ford plant into this building next month. And that's at 18th and uh, Monticello. Those are the new apartments uh, that SL Nussbaum built in Riverview. They are completely leased. This is 20121 using historic tax credits. Uh, Dan Aston uh, redeveloped the uh, uh, former Sears department store into uh, 224 apartments, 421 spaces. Uh, it's got a Five Guys Burger, Subway, and a new Soya Sushi Bar being built. If you've not been on 21st Street lately, it's a really nice new addition. I don't know how he got tax credits for it because he basically tore down the Sears department store, and there was just basically the pillar sticking up, but somehow it, uh, it qualified. So good for him. This is uh, Old Dominion University. Obviously, $350 million of taxable investment has been made there. If you've not been down to ODU lately, it really is phenomenal. Uh, you have to get down there and see what's going on. Uh, this is something that if when I was there, I would have made even worse grades. This is a $43 million investment by a group out of Texas. Uh, com not a penny of city money in this thing. 307 private apartments for ODU students. It is fantastic. They want to get on with phase two, another $35 million investment. Uh, this is a new $15 million police precinct we're building at Central Business Park. It's going to be opening up next month. It's the first building built specifically for Norfolk Police since 1952. And uh, as you can tell, it's just a beautiful addition. Uh, for them, they will move out of the former TWA facility on uh, Military Highway, uh, which will then become completely the uh, training center for uh, NPD. Uh, this is a new development. Uh, Murdy, many of you probably know Buddy Adams, uh, Grandy Tower. Uh, Buddy is back with the East Beach Harbor, $20 million investment, 136 apartments down at East Beach. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful uh, new apartment uh, complex. Uh, the down there, and he's underway with that. Uh, this was a, uh, a, a certainly the Franciscus companies. If anybody's here associated with Franciscus, thanks for uh, coming uh, to our aid on Harbor Walk. It basically, uh, we had the Chinese drywall issue out here, and we were able to resolve that, have Franciscus come in and complete a project that the developer had walked away from. And then finally, here's the Ford plant. You may have heard of KT and Nadi. It's a Belgian company, came in, bought the uh, former. 
664,000 square foot building here. Uh, Jacoby Group out of Atlanta has purchased uh, the entire thing and then flipped this building to KTN. All this is down and is uh, available for industrial and other distribution type related development. And so we are working currently with about 700,000 square feet of opportunities uh, in this arena. And uh, we also have a lot of other uh, kind of, uh, there is an awful lot of activity out there right now.